So, New Year's traditions. We've talked about Chelsea Clinton bringing in the New Year by talking to the Church of Satan. Did you know? No, Franz is not showing up, even though that is his character. That is his official phrase. I should get a shirt made that just says, did you know? Has a picture of a guy named Franz. Um, but did you know? Did you? Ah, no, no. Franz, Franz, I just did Franz on Bam Magera's Afterlife. He can't come back that quickly. But did you know <laughs> that there is actually a movement? It's probably like three people, but they actually believe it. That New Year's Day is satanic, and so are New Year's resolutions. So the New Year Day, the New Year Day being satanic, that's a fairly, that's a, not a very controversial belief. The idea is, and it's true in the sense that when Christianity began to take over Europe, they they went the path of least resistance. People had traditional holidays, pagan holidays, and the church says, "Yeah, that's Jesus' birthday," because they really don't care. They're like, if this is when everyone gets together and hangs out, we'll just rename it. And they did that with churches and holy sites and holidays across the board. Apparently in the Bible, there's a part in Exodus where God says to Moses and Aaron, and I think Aaron's his son or something like that. Maybe it's just some other dude who's just like, <laughs> he was like a time traveler who just hung out with Moses and he pops up occasionally in the Bible. I wonder if there is a time traveler in the Bible, like Bible times, like just chilling in the background. Okay, so Moses and Aaron are, are hanging out, and God goes, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. And fades away. So the, what he's talking about is back in Hebrew times, there was, they used a different calendar, obviously, because they had no idea what, who Julius Caesar was. They, they're basically, when God was saying that, it was the month that is between our modern March and April which is supposed to be the new year. And we have it on January 1st. Therefore, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day are satanic. Those aren't the days that God wanted us to worship or wanted us to celebrate as the new calendar. I don't think he cares, dude. And actually, the website I was reading was from a book that was published in 1964. Hasn't gained a ton of traction. Just believe, because again, I don't. that's such a minimal thing. It's not a holy holiday when you celebrate the New Year's. It's simply just a day to say, hey, it's new beginnings. I don't, we're not a farming culture. The reason why the logic saying that God assigned that time as their new beginning is because it was harvest based. You got to pick your battles sometimes. Like if you're trying to save the souls of humanity from eternal torment, if that's what you truly believe, I don't think getting them to put down their poppers on December 31st is a good tactic. You gotta choose your battles. And I think that's what Rome was doing. To just the church in general. They're like, whatever, dude. Yeah, Jesus was born right now. Your old holiday is gone. This is the new one. They're just choosing their battles. So on its own, I didn't find that one super compelling. However, there's a trick that I've learned. You can type in blank conspiracy. Someone believes a conspiracy about that. And I talked about that like on episode four or five, a long time ago. But the problem is a lot of times it just pulls up like criminal conspiracies. However, you can, into Google, not just, I should be specific, not just type it into a text file. You have to type it into a search engine. You can type anything blank satanic. Someone will believe it's satanic. Oddly enough. No matter what you choose, if you put in laundry detergent satanic, I'm sure something will pop up. So when I typed in New Year's satanic, I found this old article. But then... Oh, man. I think I hit the jackpot here. Did you know, did you know, that not only is New Year's Day satanic, but New Year's resolutions is one of Satan's greatest weapons against humanity. So I'm going to read from this article here. It starts off with a bombshell. It starts off with something that I always personally believed, but my mind was blown when I read this sentence. Here's the first sentence of this part. A society is not a chimney. Oh, what? I oh man, I always compare society to a chimney. I I I was I thought I was the only person who ever even saw the two connected in any sort of way, but this guy this guy knows, man. Society is not a chimney. Do you know why? According to this guy, a chimney is built of bricks. Okay. You stack up bricks one on top of the other. And at some point you have a chimney. 
I think you have to have a little more planning than that. I don't think you can just stack bricks up and you have a chimney. I think you have to design it and it has to be like a, a shape with a hollow tube through it. But it's an analogy, whatever. A society is not a chimney because a chimney is built of bricks. You stack one on another in any sort of random order with no design, whatever, and eventually it becomes a chimney. But, actually, no, I'm adding the but. He doesn't add the but. This is his quote. A society, in a way, is built up of spiritual bricks, i.e. resolutions. But doesn't that make it like a chimney if now it's built of bricks? (sighs) He has this weird... It's almost like he's going by the most strict definition of the word resolution as possible. When people say, oh, hey, what's your resolution for the new year? It's a goal. It's a decision you're making. We tend that they're good resolutions, but someone would be like, oh, I'm just going to drink as much alcohol as I can tonight. That's my resolution. It's a goal. It's you're making a determination to do something. I'm resolved to do this. He goes into this whole thing. Think about the police forces, for example. A policeman has a uniform. A badge, often a firearm, if he's lucky, or he could be in Britain. But what distinguishes a true policeman from a uniformed bandit? What happens when policemen abandon their resolution to serve and to protect? You gotta have both of those in there, they just can't serve. The material objects remain the same, the uniform, badge, pistol, but the spiritual brick shatters, crumbles, and disappears. What does any of this have to do with a New Year's resolution? The title of this article that I'm reading from, New Year's Resolutions, A Satanic Plot? And I cut out where he spent the first third of the article, he came up with this weird mathematical formula to show what a resolution was. But anyways, so yes. But that's not when people say, Oh, my, what's your resolution? Oh, my resolution is to uphold the law because I'm a police officer and that's my job. That's not what we think of when we think of a New Year's resolution. He then goes on to say stuff. Think about banks. Do you think that the money in your bank is really inside a big vault with your name on a stack of dollar bills? If the bank decides to abandon their resolution to give you your money when you ask for it, you're broke. But that's not what people mean. Now... He goes on and on with all of these examples of it, but i got to get to the meat of it. This is the section entitled, How Does Satan Attack Resolutions? To quote, there's no, I couldn't make this up. Quote, Satan doesn't have huge biceps or money or an army, except for the millions of demons at his control. And I've always, I think, I think Satan would be pretty fit. I don't think he'd be like super lanky. Or like incredibly fat. I think he'd actually probably would have huge biceps. Maybe not like, maybe not like 33 inch pythons or anything. But I don't think he would be, I don't think he would be someone who you'd be like, man, you need to hit the gym, Lord of Hell. I think he would be pretty ripped. But Satan doesn't have huge biceps. And he has all the money in the world if he's tied in with these Illuminati guys. But anyways, Satan doesn't have huge biceps or money or an army. But he's the owner of a kind of big marketing consulting firm. Satan is a liar and the father of lies. I wonder who the mother is. I wonder if if that's just a turn of phrase or if it's supposed like he gave birth to lies. I guess the snake lied for the... I don't know. Since Satan wants to destroy everything that is good in our society, he must attack the very substance of the spiritual bricks that make it up. Therefore, Satan does everything he can to give bad publicity to good resolutions. One of Satan's favorite tricks is to throw dirt. Throw a handful of dirt on the reputation of resolutions using his famous New Year's Resolutions ad campaign. So I imagine like Satan sitting down in, in hell. And he's like, oh man, humanity's been doing so good for the past 10,000 years. There haven't been any sort of wars. People aren't just murdering each other in the streets. There's no terrible diseases. If only I had some way to stir the pot up on Earth. (laughs) The world's just getting nuked to pieces. He's like, nah, it's not good enough. What I need to do, what I need to do 
I need, we need to, we need straight up Mad Men this. We need to get a ad campaign going. They're like, what, what devil? Devil. He's like, my name's Satan, dude. Don't call me devil. Okay, Satan, Satan. What, what do you think we should do? What do you, release more Ebola? He's like, nah, it's child's play. You know what? I heard, I, have you guys ever heard of the term spiritual bricks? And they're like, what? No. And Satan's like, me neither. But we should tear apart these things we've never heard of. By starting a thing called New Year's Resolutions, the other demons are like, ooh, yeah, we could have these start during, you know, March, between March and April, and Satan's like, no, we have to do it the satanic New Year, January 1st, what do you guys think? And the demons are like, oh, yeah, sorry. So, Satan has set up the idea of New Year's Resolutions, and here's why. Back to this article, we're leaving hell to back to this article. The poor gullible suckers who bite this diabolical fish hook always bitterly repent afterwards. The new year arrives and they are filled with good intentions, so they leap. Quick, I must run a marathon right away since I'm fat. (laughs) Trust me, no fat person ever says they have to run a marathon right away. And at the same time, I'll do my income tax return since I'm always late. And while I'm running with my computer and my bundles of invoices under one arm, I'll hold a paintbrush in my mouth and a canvas under the other. Since I've been wanting to learn oil painting for years. What are the probabilities of success for such an endeavor? About zero. I would say that's beyond zero. You're fat, you're running a marathon, you're doing your taxes, and you're trying to paint at the same time, but... Back to the article, but this is exactly what Satan wants. He wants people to take as few resolutions as possible and to take them as incorrectly as possible in conditions which practically guarantee their failure and especially that they create as many bad memories as possible. (laughs) He didn't laugh in the article, that was me. So apparently Satan, father of lies and lord of the flies, it kind of rhymes, and has this huge demonic army, and according to this guy, isn't fit, but I'm sure he has at least a barbell set in hell. He has all this power, be magic, basically. He can be invisible, he can tempt people, but he his main plan is having, like, whispering in people's ears, you should lose weight. <laughs> He'll never lose weight. The problem with it, that is that, what if the dude loses weight? And he's like... He goes about it the right way and says, I'm fat. I should run a marathon. Next marathon's in eight months. I'm going to do it. And Satan's like, Dag nabbit. I should have never whispered in his ear to lose weight. Now I'll have to wait 60 years to capture his soul. But, you know, again, it's one of those things. Like, uh, this dude was reaching. He he had to come up with such a strict definition of the word. I think he was working backwards. I think he was probably sitting there smoking the Christian equivalent of marijuana and thought, dude. What if New Year's resolutions are satanic and then worked backwards to prove his point? That if I have such a strict version of the word resolution, then it's it, a New Year's resolution is just something you say you're going to do. And you're right. Not a lot of people do it, but it doesn't create bad memories. You just go, oh, yeah, I totally forgot. I was supposed to learn how to play guitar this year. You don't sit around and cry about it. And to be fair, if it is part of Satan's plans, most people's New Year's resolutions are pretty self-serving. So you think that would work against Satan. Because New Year's resolutions are stuff like, I want to buy a house. I want more money. I want to lose weight so I can be more attractive to attract the opposite sex. That's all very, really kind of selfish. People, Not a lot of people do New Year's resolutions when they say, I want to give more money to charity. Normally, it's something to, something material. And say it should be like, yeah, yeah, do it. Lose weight and buy that house. That's all that's important. Don't worry about your spiritual growth. Do it. You think it would be the opposite. But again, clever little trick. (laughs) If you want to find anything bizarre, just type in blank Satan or blank Satanic and you'll get stuff like this. The idea of Satan running a marketing firm, though, I I just imagine him with like one of those tribe tripod things and you have like the the sheet of paper on it and you kind of like flip it over he stays up all night like on these huge sheets of paper writing down his marketing plans and then he take goes into the office with all the other demons he sets up the tripod puts the big sheet of paper on it and instantly erupts into flames and he's like oh yeah i forgot i'm in hell like what how would you have a marketing team in hell 
what are their desks made of? Do they have, I mean, you would, everything would have to be stone. You, you couldn't keep, you can't have a computer down there. It's all on fire. Everything, I mean, all of your legal documents would be on like five miles of rock. Go, go walk three miles over that way. That's where the fine print is. I'd like to give this guy, guy the benefit of the doubt and not think that he actually meant that Satan ran an actual marketing firm, but, or marketing campaign, whatever the term was. No, it says he's the owner of a kind of big marketing consulting firm. So maybe he has a bit of an out because he said kind of. But it's still, I just imagine it's a place called like Satan and Sons. And you go in there and you go in there and you're like, this is my product. How are we going to sell it? And Satan's like, hmm, discarded baby flesh. There's a market for that somewhere. He sells it to Avon. I just love the idea that God's eternal opponent, God's like spent the past 10,000 years preparing for the final war between good and evil and Lucifer's down there making ad campaigns for IBM. I love that idea. I'm just imagining at some point in the future, Satan's going to be sitting there going over a pie chart that's made out of pebbles and seashells. And then all of a sudden he's going to look up at his clock and go, Oh, wait, I forgot. Armageddon's coming. And then just a bunch of angels show up and just lay waste to his entire empire. Saying Satan and sons. That is where I'm going to start getting all my marketing done from. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.